I would now like to turn to Ambassador Linda Thomas Greenfield of the United States in her ministerial capacity as a member uh, of President Biden's cabinet. Excellency, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sultan Albara, and thank you to UAE uh, for your leadership in convening today's discussion on climate finance for peace and security. This is an extraordinarily uh, relevant and important discussion for us to have today. And I want to thank all of our main briefers uh, for uh, their incisive and sobering remarks, but I particularly want to recognize my former boss, uh, Special Envoy Kerry, uh, who is with us here today. The global crisis is the greatest existential threat facing our world today. Complacency is no longer an option. The crisis is already here. And let me be clear, climate change is not only an environmental threat, it is also a national security threat and a health security threat. Climate change exacerbates existing conflicts and increases the chances of new ones. It is a major driver of migration and displacement, and the reverse is true also. The environment is yet another victim of war. Attacks can lead to water, soil, and land con contamination or release pollutants into the air. This can lead to a vicious cycle of environmental damage caused by war and war exacerbated by environmental damage. And this is a cycle that we must break. Of course, as Special Envoy Kerry stated, we cannot talk about the environment and security without reflecting on the consequences of Russia's premeditated, unprovoked, and unjustified war of choice against the people of Ukraine. The damage to the environment and subsequent cost of cleanup could be enormous. Russia's brazen attack on and in the vicinity of Ukraine's nuclear power plants threatened the safety and the security of all. Last week, the world spoke. 141 nations voted to condemn Russia's unconscionable actions. Russia is isolated and alone. Relevant to this arious subject, Russia's actions against Ukraine and the actions that President Biden and our allies are taking to stand up to Russia's war are resulting in the world moving away from Russia as a fossil fuel exporter. By investing in clean energy research and development, we can move toward greener technologies, which will help us fight the climate crisis and grow economies around the world. Russia's desecration of the environment is in line with its vote last December when Russia blocked the adoption of a climate security resolution by the Security Council. The resolution put forward was modest, but it was meaningful. It provided the Council with practical, actionable steps to equip UN member states and numerous UN bodies, including peacekeeping missions, with tools to better address the security implications of our changing climate. Fortunately, the clear majority of UN member states endorsed Security Council action on this issue. More than 113 countries co-sponsored December's climate resolution. So while Russia may have blocked this resolution, our global movement cannot and will not be stopped. The Security Council can and should complement, support, and reinforce our collective work under the Paris Agreement and the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change to fight this security threat. Only the Security Council can ensure that the security impacts of climate change are integrated into the critical work of conflict prevention and mitigation, peacekeeping, peace building, disaster reduction, and humanitarian response. That's our charge especially when it comes to this crisis that threatens all of us, we must honor those responsibilities. Today, let us join together and commit to transforming the climate crisis into an opportunity, one which will build a sustainable green future for the planet and for generations to come. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Your Excellency.